you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Time to give it away. Welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. Last week we gave away that X Horizon guitar. Mr. Untouchable Lee, you make it really hard to surprise. <laughs> you doing it? I'm doing good. <laughs> you know how much he loves you? <laughs> My little brother. <laughs> oh no. You're gonna make me cry. Oh man. Wow, that is beautiful. Oh, I have to give you a hug. <laughs> give you a hug. Yeah. It was a fantastic giveaway. Pierre is such an incredible musician. What a great hearted guy too. If you ever get to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, check out the Pierre Lee Band and you can go check him out, see him, and maybe he'll even be playing the X-Horizon guitar. Uh, what a kind, great guy and what a great story behind that. But there were a couple of things that I kind of skipped over to get to that giveaway last week that I want to go back to. So let's go back to about four or five days before I gave the guitar away. So now I'm going to work on getting the uh, back plates on, get this cleaned up just a little bit back in here. I've got to put on the uh, buttons for the strap. I had, de I had determined not to show anybody how I do my back plates because I'm going to have to give a disclaimer and say that if any of you try doing a back plate the way I do it and you lose your finger. I am not responsible because I am telling you, you shouldn't do it this way and yet it's the way I do it because it's the way that I have to do it. But what I do is I buy these sheets of, and there's plastic over here, over this, so you can peel the plastic off, see nice clear, but this is a three ply. It'd be what a plastic that you use for doing pick guards. So I use that plastic, so it's a three ply, it's black, white, black in there. And I've got my little template that I put, that I actually screw onto here. And then I don't have a router table, so I have to get a little creative. And this is where I'm just saying, do not try this at home. And especially if you're, if you're not an adult, make sure that if you are going to do this, that you have an adult help you do this. Because I don't want any responsibility of somebody getting hurt. Now, using routers is dangerous so people get hurt that happens and you know none of us can take that responsibility except for ourselves so if you get hurt it's on you uh, you got to be careful and i will show you what i do in order to route these out it, it's worked for me for a long time now one of these days i might get myself a router table
do not try this at home or anywhere else. This is all on me. I don't want any legal reasons why I would get in trouble. So don't do this. As I said, I don't recommend doing it this way, but I am going to just talk you through a couple of things that I'm doing here. So when I am doing this, obviously I got to keep my fingers clear from there and it's kind of close proximity with this. So a couple things that I'm doing is one, I am not pushing into the blade at all with my fingers. I will lightly hold it up there and I keep some fingers anchored here so that I don't move or slip and even if it grabs it I'm not holding it tight uh, you don't want to use any gloves or anything because if your gloves get caught in there your gloves will pull you right in so I just lightly bring it up and I'm not pushing it all and then as I do it I like this thumb here even though it's here I've got it anchored so that it's not going to it's not going to be pulled in so there are just some just some things that I'm doing and then I come around and I'm pulling it actually I'm pulling it this way I'm not pushing it I am pulling it this direction and holding it against with this one here and again anchoring so that I don't push my fingers into there so that's just just a couple of wise words again I don't recommend doing it this way but even when you're using a table router how you do it watch what you're doing with your fingers because it's not worth losing losing fingers over. Once I've got them cut out, I'm going to put a countersink hole in here. I want to make sure that my bit doesn't come all the way down. So I am going to set a stop on it. And then in order for the drill bit to not pull it up and go all the way through, I will have to hold my fingers really close there. Then I will use fine sandpaper, some 400 grit on these edges and on the corners just to take off the uh, sharp edges. to bring it in, right? Sweet water. Get stuff from sweet water, you always get candy with it. It's always fun. And then I always keep these boxes in case I need to ship a guitar somewhere. But what I want to show you with the case is I get these cases that are gator cases and there's a specific one I get. In order to have a case for the F Horizon guitar, that fits the guitar because it's got that really long horn on it. Slight, if I want a hard shell case, I need to be able to make a slight alteration to the case. And that is by removing just a little bit of this piece right here. If I remove just a little bit of this, that horn comes right up into here so I can make these work. So not all cases work. Obviously I could use a gig bag or I could have specially made cases which I know Dave Roussan does, and I also know that those cases 
are about $500, whereas these cases are like $140. I just work from the backside here. You kind of get your fingers down the back. You don't want to pull too hard this way or you'll break your styrofoam. That's the case in there. But you just kind of start working this. So once I get it sort of loose there and just kind of give myself plenty of room, pull it up, trying to not overwork it. And I come in here, but a lot of times, a lot of times the glue is still sticky on these. This one it is not actually, so it must have been manufactured a while back or something. And just, I finally got it. But I just keep working it this way, pulling it up, giving myself room. And then I'll use this spray adhesive that you can pick up something like this at a, a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby uh, spray adhesive. The reason why I don't work from the front is I seem to have a harder time getting in here and getting a hold of the cloth. That would probably actually be shorter way to go and maybe I could but I find that it's a little better for me to go this way enough that I can reach in there. There we go. Now you can see right in here and it's just right in here is where that horn is going to come through. So I just use my little saw. Down. And then I just use a short knife. Spray some adhesive into there. Just kind of all through wherever I wherever I took adhesive off. And then we just start working it back in. And then I use a butter knife and I just start to tuck it all back down inside. And then just one more fun thing guys, sneak peek. This is a two and three eighths inch thick, fairly lightweight wood that was given to me by my friend Jim, who's given me wood in the past. This is from a willow tree and it has been sitting drying for 20 years. So now I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna make out of this. I am not gonna be making a six string x horizon guitar out of this one, but we gotta get creative. So suggestions are welcome. Hey, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Appreciate you coming around. Really appreciate the Patreons with their support and their help. See you next time, guys. Keep fighting for joy.